Things are hotting up. Things are hotting up with regards to taps over. Maybe Mickey van der Ven can be done. Maybe we can find the right price for Pierre Mahoyberg. Maybe we can go and then gazump Manchester United for Sofiane Amrabat, who I believe is the key. The key signing. Whilst Tapsoba and Vicario and Van der Ven are necessary improvements, I personally believe that even with them, without a monster number six that fits the criteria, that exactly represents the specificities of the six in the Postacoglu system, I'm not entirely convinced that we're going to have everything we need. With someone like Sofia and Amrabat, for me, I think the six is a tick. What's happening, everybody? How you doing? Welcome back to the Spurs Talk Show. I'm Sean Butler. Well, there's Bugsy Malone doing the things that she loves. We hope you're doing the things that you love with the people that you love doing them with and you're healthy and happy in the process. Please do me a favor, guys. Smash the like button for me on the video. Smash the subscribe if you haven't already. Join the now 11,500 Tottenham fans that have gone before you. Welcome back to all of those. Welcome to the new. Hit the notification bell and drop a comment. Let me know your thoughts on today's topic. It's a quick one. It's the second one of the day, it's Monday afternoon. I should probably be doing a video on the press conference of Ange Postacoglu, but I wanna wait for the full embargoed sections to be released, so maybe I'll do them tomorrow when all that comes out. Today, I wanna to give you an update on some noise that's coming out, that's emerging as the day has gone on regarding Edmund Tap Sober. And it's really quite interesting. Earlier on today, guys, there was a tweet this morning from George Bannister on Twitter, who I'm not entirely sure of what the connection is, but he definitely is somewhat of an ITK at Tottenham. And he responded to Matty Hay, shout out to Matt, hope he's doing okay, saying Spurs don't want to miss out on Tapsoba. Basically, they're looking at all the potential avenues. The other centre-back, Jonathan Tarr, has a release clause that expires tomorrow. And so Leverkusen are playing hardball to potentially avoid losing both, and certainly one for far below his value via the clause. He's talking, of course, about Jonah Tarr. Jonah Tarr, of course, guys, is a player that if you've been watching my channel for a while, you will know I did a video on him not that long ago, a video where I actually waxed quite lyrical about this guy. I think he's a wonderful player. I think he doesn't sit the Tottenham system. But when he was initially linked with Tottenham earlier on in the summer, I wasn't against it. He plays very well on a back three. You've got to remember, Bayer Leverkusen's back three, back five system is one of the best in Europe. You've got Hincapio on the left, Jonah Tarr in the middle, and Tapsoba on the right. Tapsoba can play in the back four when necessary on the left-hand side or the right-hand side. But on top of that, you have the wing-backs of Bakker, the Dutch guy on the left, who's a brilliant talent, and also Frimpong, who is one of the best right wing-backs in Europe. So Leverkusen's strongest area of their pitch, they've obviously got Florian Wurtz and things up front, but their strongest area is 100% their back line. And they are worried that Jonah Tarr has got a clause in his contract that expires apparently at midnight tonight. And they don't want to see a situation where they deal with Tottenham and then also get triggered by Jonah Tarr. I don't think Tottenham are going to trigger Jonah, Jonah Tarr's clause. As I say, I just don't think he necessarily fits Tottenham's system. Great player, though. But they're worried about kind of ripping to shreds their entire centre-back system. Because, listen, Pierre Hincapi has also been um, linked away from Tottenham for... Uh, sorry, linked away from Leverkusen for months and months and months. So I think they're just playing a little bit clever. They, they have to kind of protect their assets. So I would imagine that something might move in that regard very soon. And the reason why I'm saying that is, do you remember Darren Yarlett, the Twitter account that kind of appeared on the scene out of nowhere about two weeks ago, maybe three weeks ago? People started putting two and two together and realizing that when he was putting these ticks and these medical emoji symbols and stuff, it turned out that this guy was either the person who feeds... Paul O'Keefe, or they have, fun, they have the same source because this guy was slightly ahead of Paul O'Keefe with a lot of the transfer news. And I was talking about him on Henry's show and we w literally watched him go from like 500 followers to 10,000 followers or something in the space of a couple of hours. Everyone started to cotton on. Well, Darren Yarlett last night said, massive week for Tottenham. 
massive week coming up. Tottenham fans will be happy. I'm paraphrasing, but something to that extent. And of course, what would that mean? What would that mean? Well, what else is definitely happening right now? Manuel Solomon is having his medical, apparently, allegedly, at Tottenham. But is the conclusion of that deal really going to get every Tottenham fan really excited and make them really happy? I don't think so. I think Tottenham fans have generally probably moved on from that story. They assume it's done. I don't think that's enough to warrant the, t the tweet from Darren Yarlett. So maybe, just maybe, something else is happening. And maybe, just maybe, if it's true that Jonathan Tarr, Jonah Tarr's release clause expires at midnight tonight, then maybe, just maybe, you'll see some movement, some, some like, energy, some attention given to getting that deal done tomorrow or Wednesday. And the story doesn't finish there because we've also got some other breaking news right now from uh, the Daily Hotspur, who's obviously just sharing from somebody else, a guy called Sasha Tavalieri, who I'm not entirely sure who this guy is. He's got about 60,000 followers, but I'll be honest, I have absolutely no idea whether he's a tier one, tier two, or tier nowhere. But he's saying Edmund Tapsover's entourage met with Tottenham Hotspur over the weekend to discuss personal terms in which significant progress was made between the two parties. Spurs are now set to open talks with Bayer Leverkusen, who want 30 million euros for the defender. I don't know where to go with this. If I'm entirely honest, I'm probably going to give it a bit of a, a, a bullshit rating. I'm going to see if I can put a video in to, to, to make it make sense. But in any event, it's all starting to click. It's all starting to kind of build some momentum around the idea that something is happening with regards to the centre-back movement, and it's happening this week. We have a few days left before we end up going away to Australia. It would be perfect. It would be absolutely perfect to get both of them, Van der Ven, and Tapsoba, or Tapsoba and Tosin, or whoever it is. Get those guys in before we go away so we can plan and practice and prep for the season with our first choice centre-backs options in. I would be dream world scenarioing you guys if I was to say I think both of them are going to get done. But maybe, just maybe, the noise when you, when you kind of conflate Darren Yarlett saying big things are happening and we can maybe establish the idea that it's probably not going to be just Man or Solomon and then you have your boy George saying that that is also something that's going on with Taps Over. And then this guy, whoever this last guy is, whether or not he's got anything to do with it at all, I think Tottenham will end up paying a little bit more than 30 million. But maybe, just maybe, the fact that the release clause is expiring on Jonah Tarr, maybe when that's out of the way, they, they, don't, they, don't, they don't face the risk of losing Tarr and Taps Over, then they can get down to business and agree a deal.